Good evening, Phil here. You may know me as the Safe State Gamer. You can see me on the screen right now. Uh, welcome to the commentary for the Safe State Gamer Show. You're watching episode one right now, Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacist. And I'm not sure how much I'm going to have to say about it as far as this episode goes, because it's not really a very good episode. Um, and I'm assuming you agree. The later ones certainly got much more positive feedback. Not that this one got negative feedback, which surprises me because it sure as hell deserves it. Uh, we can discuss right now, I guess, the opening sequence here, which uh, deliberately uses all angry video game nerd footage actually from his introductions. I didn't just go through and pluck footage from the reviews. I figured uh, Crisbo would be even lazier about his plagiarism and actually just steal the opening montage wholesale. And you can see it just passed at the bottom. You'll see YouTube's old um, timeline where you can advance forward and backward through the video, uh, which shows his uh, copying of the window is a little sloppy as well. Uh, as far as the choice of song goes, um, yeah, I, I guess I just kind of thought, as he just explained, he, me, as me just explained, uh, it's the only MP3 that he has, which I, I thought was um, an interesting thing to do, was to give him a bad taste in music. And <laughs> I think later episodes sort of uh, work against that, because to be honest, I, I think I do actually use some very good music throughout the Save State Gamer show. Um, I do have a little bit of soft spot for Say La Vie, to be perfectly honest. But my initial... Inish? <laughs> Forgive my speech impediment. It comes and goes. Uh, but my initial conception of the character was to give him a very poor taste in uh, popular music. The sequence that you're watching right now is uh, one of the only good things about this video, and, and that's a, it's relatively good, I guess. Um, this is the most irate gamer like that he actually is in this little montage here. And you'll notice if you've watched the other videos, presumably you have, and you're watching this, that there's no background music. See, this is just him narrating and, and making awful uh, jokes and comparisons. Later on, what I would do is use music to sort of, um, let's see, to sort of keep the rhythm up, to sort of keep people interested while they watch. Um, and that was not intentional. The next video that I made just happened to be around Christmas, so I did the, uh, was it the top five DSi games, and I used Jingle Bells in the background. And I just did it because it was a Christmas video, and that's a appropriate for such a setting. Uh, but I realized that it really gives the the um, the reviews uh, a much better rhythm, and so uh, I I maintain that every video afterwards uses um, background music from front to back. There are a few exceptions where it drops out, and we can address those as they come up, I guess. First appearance of the Wii Wheel. See, there's a few things actually in this video. I'm not very proud of how this turned out, but there are a few things in the video that actually. Uh, became runners for me. I think they would have become runners whether or not I ever did this video. But one of them is using the Wii Wheel to control games that by no means could be controlled by the Wii Wheel. Uh, Cousin Joey, of course, comes back later on. Say La Vie. So it sets some of the groundwork for the later ones. I'm pausing here because I want you to listen to the... See, the narration here is a lot different. The delivery is a lot different from what I would employ for Crisbo in the later videos. And you'll see quite a few things are different about the presentation, uh, such as the fact that I'm much closer to the camera in this video when I'm on screen, not now, obviously, than I am in later videos. In later videos, I moved back from the camera because uh, it, it was more like the irate gamer to do that. To be up close to the camera is like any number of other really crappy amateur video game reviewers. So I guess there's still... <laughs> this was at the first of many uh, uh, unfortunate websites on Crisbo's browser when he <laughs> cuts to footage of that. Um, but yeah, so later on I backed up from the camera to be a little more like the irate gamer in terms of presentation. Um, as far as the narration goes, which is what I wanted to address earlier, the reason that it's a lot different is that, um, yeah, sorry, the volume got really loud. Uh, here's the narration again. The reason that it's a lot different, it's a lot more lethargic and a lot less interested, or less enthusiastic, I should say, than later Save State Gamer videos, uh, is because what you're watching here, this is footage, actually, of um, a different video. I 
chopped it up a little bit. I think I reorganized um, some of the footage, but not much. Basically, what I had done is I created a video, a, a comedy let's play of Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist. It was only one video long, and it was just it was intentionally crappy. And to be perfectly honest, the inspiration for that, and I, I use that term very generously, uh, I shouldn't drag his name into it. He's a far better entertainer than this uh, quote unquote tribute would lead you to believe was Stan Birdman, who did an extremely funny Let's Play of uh, one of the Mega Man games, and he only did... Uh, I forget i forget what, what game it was. He only did one video, but he, he made it look like it was, video, you know, Let's Play Mega Man Part 81, and he still hadn't beaten any of the Robot Masters. He was totally incompetent. It was really funny. Um, he's, he's since done other ones uh, along those lines. I thought the Mega Man one was by far the best. Uh, but, yeah, Stan Birdman is certainly worth checking out. And it led me months later. I had the uh, uh, audacity to do this, which which really it, he didn't deserve. This is not really nearly as funny as uh, I thought it was going to be. So I took it off my channel eventually. But then when I got the idea to create irate gamer parodies, I um, used this footage because it was pre-existing, and I thought a good thing to do would be to take that and riff on it. Um, in addition, you know, bring up those little montages and things like that, the pointless introduction sequence, uh, some of the bad acting, and uh, again, I don't, I'm not going to say that I was successful as far as this video goes. In fact, I would explicitly say that I was not very successful. I don't think this is that good. Um, why I did the Irate Gamer parody at all, uh, I have to give probably 100% credit to the third rate gamer because I discovered at some point um, this Cousin Joey thing coming up and then I'll go back to my previous point. <laughs> See, I kind of <laughs> shot my load with Cousin Joey in the first video and also the get the fuck off my property. So two of the really big irate gamer jokes I just kind of threw away on this crappy thing. Um, I did revisit each of those jokes to some extent later on in a significantly different way, which I hope justified the fact that I reused them. But boy, they were used very poorly in this video. They definitely deserve better treatment than that. But discovering the third rate gamer was enormously inspiring. I remember when I found him, it happened to be 11 o'clock at night or something, maybe later, and I was quite tired, and I watched one or two videos, and then I had to watch all of them back to back, and I stayed up much later than I should have. I was exhausted the next morning. But I left until I fell asleep. It was brilliant stuff. Third Rate Gamer is um, probably my personal favorite Irate Gamer parody. Although Irritated Gamer is also... Excuse me. He's also brilliant front to back without any question. He's enormously talented. Um, and another... You know, he's an inspiration in that respect. But for some reason, Third Rate Gamer edges him out. I think uh, his type of comedy sort of just connects with me a little... Uh, it resonates with me a little bit, a um, little bit more. Um, and there's one actually right now called the Game Boob, who I would induct into that little Hall of Fame. He's definitely worth watching. Uh, but let's see. Before this is this uh, introductory video is over, let me see if there's anything else that I really want to discuss. Um, oh well, as you'll see, well, two things. The background here it's a little barren. I was actually moving out of this apartment when I or very soon I was going to move out of this apartment when I shot this and you'll see I think you can actually see a box in the background that has yet to be filled oh seven yeah seven being the perfect rating is another thing that carried over um, but me moving out actually revisited that in the next video where it became a plot point um, the name Crisbo Hers is actually the first of many 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 there's me doing my Jimmy Stewart impression first of many many Tim and Eric um, references and uh, that's just because they always tend to choose these really bizarre names that don't exist <laughs> in reality. Um, and, you know, if you said them out loud, they would... Wow, I did closing credits in this, too? God, this whole thing is just padded out. Yeah, I really apologize. This video is awful. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the first of many Tim and Eric references. Uh, obviously, that one's pretty vague but um I will be reviewing Fantastic Mr. Fox a brand new release in cinemas that's released brand new this week in God I don't remember any of this at all uh, I didn't watch this before I commentated on it because I knew I'd have very little to say about specifics so what I instead wanted to do was just speak a little more general about Save State Gamer and a few other things